Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Katie Asko from Dublin, Ireland, and these are your latest headlines from around the world. Pro-life facilities in the US are coming under attack since the leak of the draft opinion of Supreme Court justices in the Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization case early last month. In the latest incidents over the past few days, three attacks were reported in New York, Florida and North Carolina. On Monday night, June 6, the Compass Care Community Medical Facility in Amherst, New York was firebombed by unknown persons. Those associated with the facility say that an extremist pro-abortion outfit named Jane's Revenge could be behind the attack. Lending credence to their allegation is the graffiti that reads Jane was here sprayed on the wall of the clinic. On Memorial Day weekend, the church-run South Broward Pregnancy Help Centre was also defaced with graffiti. Similarly, pro-choice graffiti was sprayed on the walls of another pro-life agency in North Carolina's Asheville on Monday, with police adding that the vandals also smashed the windows of the mountain area Pregnancy Services Building. In the U.S. House of Representatives, the House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy of the Republican Party has slammed the assassination bid on Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Police arrested a 26-year-old man on Wednesday, June 8th, after he travelled to the House of Justice Kavanaugh with the intention of assassinating him. Mr. McCarthy demanded that Speaker Nancy Pelosi call a vote on the bill passed by the Senate to enhance security cover for justices and their families. This comes after pro-choice activists have stepped up protests against the justices, anticipating that Roe v. Wade could possibly be overturned with the verdict on Dobbs v. Jackson. Pro-abortion groups have vowed to continue protests outside the residences of Supreme Court justices. The Commission of Bishops' Conferences of the European Union has expressed surprise over the attempt of the EU's lawmaking body to seek a discussion on the abortion debate in the US. The bishops' concerns were expressed in a communique on June 8th by Father Manuel Barrios Prieto, the Secretary General of the Commission. The priest said that the European Parliament's bid to discuss the impact of a leaked document of US justices is an interference in the jurisdictional decisions of a sovereign state. Father Prieto said the adoption of a resolution by the European Parliament that endorses this interference will only discredit this institution. He also pointed out that from a legal angle, there is no recognised right to abortion in the EU or international law. Apparently, the EU is quite concerned about the ramifications should Roe v. Wade be overturned in the US. Staying in the U.S. in the state of Texas, Governor Greg Abbott has taken steps to help traumatized children in Uvalde, where 19 school children were killed in a mass shooting last month. The governor directed the Health and Human Services Commission on Wednesday to dole out behavior health services to each child in the town of 16,000 residents. In a letter sent to Texas Health and Human Services Commissioner Cecil Young, Mr. Abbott said children ought to have access to to mental health treatment as families rebuild lives. He also urged the commissioner to use all available resources to work with families to provide necessary behavioral health services to children. The federal government's school emergency response to violence program is also providing assistance to Uvalde residents. Pope Francis has mourned the passing of the Lieutenant of the Grand Master Fra Marco Luzzago, head of the Sovereign Order of Malta. A condolence telegram was sent to Cardinal Silvano Maria Tomas, the Papal Delegate for the Order, by the Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin. In the telegram, the Pope said, in recalling the commitment he gave generously in carrying out his high office in the service of this institution, I invoke eternal peace upon him. Fra Luzzago, who passed away on June 7th, was elected head of the order on November 8, 2020. A native of Brescia in Italy, he completed his medical studies before joining the Order of Malta in 1975. The new patriarch of the ancient church of the East Mar, Jakub Daniel, will assume office after the consecration liturgy at St. Mary's Cathedral in Baghdad on August 19th, the Feast of the Transfiguration. This church is an offshoot of the ancient Assyrian Church of the East, which is also based in Iraq. Mar Daniel is currently serving as the Metropolitan of Australia and New Zealand. The Synod of Bishops of the Ancient Church of the East elected him as the successor of Patriarch Mar Adai II, who 
passed away on February 11th in the US. The church is made up of about 70,000 believers and uses East Syriac in its liturgy. The ancient Church of the East was formed in 1964 when certain bishops, priests and laypersons of the Assyrian Church opposed the liturgical changes introduced by Patriarch Shimon XXII. The shortening of the Lenten fast and the adoption of the Gregorian calendar sparked a backlash. The dissenting bishops chose Bishop Toma Darmo as their patriarch and christened the Splinter Church, the ancient Church of the East. During their plenary meeting on Tuesday, June 7th, Polish Catholic bishops said that unless there is continued support, many Ukrainians will not survive. The prelates assembled in Zakopane in southern Poland for the plenary meeting. After the meeting, they issued a message saying that the arrival of three million Ukrainian refugees in the country deserves recognition. They appealed to everyone to continue showing magnanimity towards the suffering people of Ukraine, as without it, they will not survive. The bishops also sought a systematic approach in helping victims of war in Ukraine as well as in Poland. They said that parishes, state institutions, NGOs and local governments should join hands to provide support to Ukrainians. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine began on February 24th, as many as 3.9 million people have crossed the border from Ukraine into Poland. In South Korea, a Catholic group called the One Body, One Spirit has begun its second round of fundraising for Ukrainians affected by the Russian invasion. The first campaign was from March 7th to April 30th and raised 350,000 US dollars for relief operations via Caritas Ukraine and another 100,000 US dollars was sent for Ukrainian refugees in neighboring countries through Caritas Czech Republic, Catholic Times of Korea reported. During the first campaign, as many as 4,455 people donated generously to the cause. The second campaign will continue until July 31st. The funds have been used to provide food, sanitation and essential supplies to more than 250,000 Ukrainians. The organization will also host an expo and prayer campaign at its headquarters in Myeongdong Cathedral in the capital Seoul. Those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow and visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.